What's up, my fellow devs, and welcome back to the dev shop. So today we're gonna pick up where we left off. And we're gonna get our character moving using the brand new physics character controller. Let's get started. So to get started on our player that we created in the previous videos, we're going to add a new component called physics character controller. As you can see, we have a capsule. And before we deal with that, we're going to add another component and it's going to be script canvas. All right, so let's focus on the capsule. So as you can see, it doesn't really fit our body. The three main things to remedy that, that we're gonna focus on is under physics character controller, we're going to adjust the height and the radius as well as the scale. So the first thing we want to do is adjust the scale. Now, if you hover to the corner ever so slightly, if you click and drag up or down, you can modify the, uh, the component. This doesn't work for everything, and I wish we had actual controls to better represent this, but that should work out for you guys. So we want to make sure it covers our feet just about, just about there is fine. So at about 1.25 if you're using the Ren character. The radius, we're going to actually make that a little bit smaller, about right there, so 0.21. And the height, we can just adjust until it's the same height as our character. There we go. And then you can play with that, with the scale and the height to make sure that everything works out fine. I think that works pretty well. All right, and that's just going to take care of our uh, collisions and things like that um, because the character controller is a kinematic controller. So, so anything that involves collisions or reactions to a collision, we have to script ourselves because it does not adhere to outside forces or impulses or things of that nature. So we have to do all that through scripting, even handling our own gravity. So if you're coming from, say, Unity and you're using the character controller that way, you're kind of you're kind of familiar with how we have to script everything instead of relying on actual physics, which is a way to do that. But that's we'll we'll do that down the line. All right. The next thing we want to do is go down to our script canvas. Let's open that up, and here we are. So the first thing we want to do is go to the search bar, type in input, and we're going to grab the input handler. And I'm actually going to copy this three more times. I'm just going to deal with the first one. Now, before I get started, now we're going to put forward here. And we're going to need to grab the physics character controller. Try relative move. We're gonna want that. Before we do that, we want to actually get the forward axes for the character. And luckily, Script Canvas provides that for us. So we type in forward, go get forward, and plug that in, and that's good. And it's, for this, we're doing this because when we move forward, backwards, left, right, diagonal, we want to make sure that we're going off the dependence of our forward vector. So no matter which way we are turned, it's going to treat that particular axis that we're currently looking at as our forward vector. If we don't do this, if we move forward and then say we turn left or right, we're going to keep moving forward irrespective of the way we're turned. And we do not want that. So let's go ahead and take the uh, vector 3 that's coming out for our forward vector, we're actually going to drag out. And this is another way to search nodes. And we're going to type in multiply. And that is going to go down to our vector 3, multiply by number. All right, let's plug that in. Now that result, we want to plug into our delta position for the try relative move. Plug that in. And now, since we are using a kinematic controller, it does not 
move based on rigid bodies or setting velocity or physics in general. So we're going to have to actually use position. And we're supplied with a couple of notes for that. So what we're gonna do is grab the set base position and we're going to tie that in. So as long as we're holding down the forward button, it's going to try to move based off what we multiply it by and it's going to set that position as long as we're holding down, uh, let's say the W key, which is gonna allow us to move. So to multiply by number, we're gonna plug in a small number, so 0 0.01, that should do it. And because we have our animation graph and all that set up, we actually want to go up here to animation, animation graph or anim graph, and we have a lot of options. But we want to scroll down to get named parameter float. Since our speed variable is a float, this is the one that we want to use. So we're saying to set the name to we're saying to set the speed variable to one, and that's going to activate our uh, run cycle or walk cycle and then I'm going to copy that which is control D when you have our node highlighted and I'm going to set that back to zero when we release the uh, the W key all right now I'm going to set up the other three inputs and then I'll come back and show you guys what I did and the changes that I made All right, we're back, here we are. So this is our movement. We have forward, backwards, left, and right. So you guys saw how I did the forward movement. We have, we get our forward, multiply it by a number, try get move, or sorry, try relative move, set position, set our animation. For the backwards movement, same thing, except since we're moving backwards, we're going to multiply it by negative 0 0.01, and everything else is the same, except for our animation. We need to make that sure that's negative one with the release still being zero. For our left and right, it's fairly simple since we don't have an animation for that yet. All we need to do instead of using the forward, we need to get the right. And since this is our right movement, we just multiply it by 0 0.01, try move and set the position. And for the left, same thing, we have our right since it's the opposite of right and we multiply that by a negative. 0 0.01 and everything else is the same all right so that's pretty much our movement if I was to save this I'm just gonna call it movement and exit out of it if I add the movement script hit okay so the last thing we need to do is set up our input so we can actually move and that's why I actually had you guys add the input component in the beginning of the series so let's hit this button here right next to the three but three dots open up our asset editor let me open this up a little bit go to file new input bindings and we're just gonna call this uh, adventure input all right so we can just hit this plus sign here I'm gonna add a generator sorry an event uh, three more times for forward back left and right and for the forward we're going to use the same name we use for the input handler so forward and we're going to use event generator hit okay we're going to actually add two so that happens so get used to that <laughs> we're going to add two so we have event generators for forward here let's drop that down and we want to go to keyboard and we want to go to W right there and for the second generator we want to leave it on gamepad and we want to find thumbstick left up there we go all right that's done now I'm going to do the same thing for back left and right and then I'll go over it just to make sure you guys have the same thing that I have Alright, and we're back. 
So we have our four inputs. We have forward, back, left, and right. For back, you guys should have uh, S for the keyboard and thumbstick left down for the gamepad. For right, you should have D with thumbstick left right for obviously right. <laughs> and for left, you should have keyboard A and thumbstick left right. Now I did it this way in case you guys are doing some testing and you're making a uh, gamepad game. If you plug in a controller right now and hit play in the editor, your controller will work at least for the movement. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Make sure that you save it. Mine has already been saved so it's not highlighted. And put that, we'll plug it in. Call it adventure input. So let me exit out of this, close this up a little bit. If I hit play, I should be able to move. All right, if I move backwards, and we don't have a left and right, but it still should work. It's gonna be a little jittery. We don't have any animation or anything, but it works. Our player has movement, and to signify this a little bit, this a little bit better, and to show this off just a little bit better, we're actually going to add a child entity. Call it follow cam. Add component. Camera. We hit two to bring up the movement controls. Move it back. Move it up. About right there. And move it over. It's a little bit close. Move it back some more. There we go. Now we have a moving character. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. If you really like the video, give it a thumbs up. That always helps the channel. Don't forget to join the Discord. I would love to see all you guys over there. Other than that, hope you guys are having a very dope day. I hope you're prospering in your projects. And until next time, keep developing.